Hello, this is Chaudhary Mahmood Anwar. Thank you very much for joining me today. I am going to explain point by serial correlation in a very easy way to understand and conduct because most of the people have a limited understanding with it in comparison to the traditional correlation analysis that is Pearson product movement correlation analysis. So I hope you will enjoy. So what is point by serial correlation analysis? If you want to correlate two variables that is one variable is dichotomous variable and second variable is continuous variable then you have to conduct a point by serial correlation analysis because the regular correlation analysis won't work for this variable structure dichotomous variables mean the variable having two categories only that is also called binary variable for instance gender or employment status you know that in gender there are two categories only one male and two female employment status you know that one employed to unemployed so these are the dichotomous variables the continuous variables you already know about them that performance scores time weight intelligence scores etc all are continuous variables these are the variables we normally check their association by using Pearson product movement correlation technique. But before conducting the point by serial correlation analysis, you have to fulfill certain assumptions. So the assumption number one for your data is one variable must be dichotomous. So you have to assure that one variable must be dichotomous. You are going to test for point by serial correlation. Assumption number two is one variable must be continuous. Okay, so one variable must be dichotomous and one variable must be continuous. Therefore, you will test the association between both variables that is called point by serial correlation. The third assumption is continuous variable must be outliers free for each category of dichotomous variable. So understand that your data should be outliers free. There should be no outlier. You have to test the data for outliers. I will tell you later on how you will test for it. Assumption 4 is continuous variable must follow approximately normal distribution for each category of dichotomous variable. So in assumption 4 you have to ensure that your continuous variable is normally distributed or have approximate normal distribution for each category of dichotomous variable. And the last assumption is Continuous variable should have equal variances for each category of the dichotomous variable. So, how you will analyze last three assumptions? For first two assumptions, you already know that you have captured your data for dichotomous variable or continuous variable. You already know it. To test assumption number three, four, and five, what you will do? You can simply check these assumptions in SPSS to test your data for outliers. You just need to conduct an outlier detection test in SPSS. Make sure that for your data, Cook's distance is less than 1. If Cook's distance is greater than 1, then your data need to be cleaned from outliers. Second, check the values of standardized residuals of your data. The values of standardized residuals must be less than or equal to 3. All the values that are greater than or equal to 3 must be removed in order to clean your data once your data is outlier free. Let's proceed to assumption 4. You can test the normality of your data by simply running Shapiro will test in SPSS. And finally assumption number 5. You can simply conduct the Levin's test of equality of variances in SPSS to ensure that your data meet the assumption number 5. Once you have assured that your data meets these five assumptions, you can simply proceed to conduct point by serial correlation analysis. And what you need to do for this, you just need to conduct a Pearson product movement correlation analysis in SPSS in this way. This is the sample data file. I have gender, and here you can see that gender is a dichotomous variable having two categories. And this is the innovativeness based self esteem, which is a continuous variable tabbed on scale. So, I want to check the association between gender 
which is a dichotomous variable and IBSC which is a continuous variable. What I will do? I will go to analyze correlation by variate. I will enter the variables gender and IBSC into the variables box. I will click Pearson product movement correlation and test of significance should be two tailed and I will select flag significant correlations. Then just I will press OK. Here is the SPSS result output. In the correlation matrix, you can see that for the sample data of 120 observations, the correlation between gender and IBSC is negative 0 0.089 and it is insignificant. Therefore, you will conclude that there is no point by serial correlation between gender and IBSC. So it's very easy to understand. Okay, and I hope you will find this lecture easy to understand and it would definitely add to your knowledge base. Thank you very much for watching this lecture. Okay, Dr. Uh, Alan Ben Jacob, are you prepared to move forward? Yes, I can. Okay, the, the, Dr. Alan Ben Jacobs, he actually took us up on the offer to publish with the International Journal of Management, Economics, and Social Sciences. This is one of the things that we are prepared to do as a group to help you get published in a peer-reviewed journal. So, uh, Dr. Jacob, before you move forward with that, I'd like you to discuss a little bit about your experience and then go right into your presentation. Yes, yeah, sure, gladly. So, good morning, everyone. Good afternoon. I'm in the West Coast, so it depends when you are, where you are in the globe. Uh, I finished my uh, DBA uh, early this year, and toward the end of the of the, um, the dissertation approval and discussion, I try to to publish in uh, several uh, um, magazine, and and I didn't succeed. Uh, I connected with uh, with Dr. Rivers and the and the society, and I. Uh, shared my my passion in publishing my uh, my topic, which was similar to what I will uh, discuss now in the presentation. And uh, Dr. Rivers he escorted me uh, and uh, allowed me to to publish the, the article. It was a process of uh, three to four months that it took a lot of back and forth. And uh, I learned that it's I, I cannot use the same dissertation. I would need to put my inner voice, my academic uh, uh, background and study, and I would need to, to turn it into something a bit different than what I, I thought it would be. And, and again, after three or four months, we were able, I was able to, to publish. It was published uh, mid-September. So and I'm very proud and honored to, to get this escort and the support from the, from the DBA Society team. So thank you.